And one of the things that Imam al qurtubi rahimahullah said, the Imam from Qurtaba, said about this verse is very interesting. He says, لِأَنَّ الْمَاءِ لَيْسْتَكِرْ فِي مَوْضِعٍ Because water doesn't stay in the same place all the time. وَكَذَلِكَ الدُّنْيَا لَا تَبْقَى فِي حَالٍ وَاحِدًا And just like that, the life of this world doesn't stay in the same place all the time. Just like the rain, just like the water doesn't stay still, neither does the, the world that we live in, the life that we live in, stay the same. It's on, in constant flux. That we have good days in our lives and we have difficult days. We have moments of youthfulness and moments of old age. We have moments of wealth and then times of poverty. All of this shows that we're in constant flux. The life of this world is the same. Allah in the Quran says, وَتِلْكَ الْأَيَّامِ نُدَاوِلُهَا بَيْنَ النَّاسِ These are days Allah alters between the people. Allah is Malik al-Mulk. تُؤْتِ الْمُلْكَ مَنْ Allah is the king of kings and Allah gives king whoever he pleases and takes it from whoever he pleases. And Allah honors يُعِزُّ مَنْ يشاء. Allah honors whom he pleases and Allah humiliates whom he pleases. Everything therefore is in the hands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now in, the, in Surah Al-Kahf, in the same surah in which Allah revealed this ayah, وَضْرِبْ لَهُمْ the entire Surah Al-Kahf is relevant for us in light of our experience here in al Why? Al-Kahf is the cave. And we're going to see the caves on our final day in the al pujaras mountains where the Muslims hid out. But remember that the cave was the cave where the young kids held out as a test of their faith in Surah Al-Kahf that we recite every Friday. In that surah, Allah gives us different examples of being tested at different times. So for example, there is a test of power, the test of wealth, there is a test of religion. All of these culminate in that one surah. Now, today we saw gardens in Manish Zahra. There were gardens. There was a jardin altar and the jardin bajr. There was the upper garden in Az Zahra and there was a lower garden in Az Zahra. Did you know that the upper garden, the altar, was a compound. It was for the wealthy and the elite. They were the only ones who had access to the upper garden. And the jardin bajo, the lower one, was for the average man. And if you think about this, what does it remind you of in Surah Al-Kahf? About the two men who had the two gardens, isn't it? لَهُمْ مَتَلَ الرَّجُلَيْنِ Allah says, strike for them the example of the man who had two gardens. Two men, one of them had two gardens, Allah says. Right? We gave to one of them, Ja'alna, which is Allah is fa'al. Allah is the one that gave in the first place. That's the key thing to remember. Min a'nab of uh, you know fruits, right? And Allah says we made you know palm trees encircle the garden. Crops wa kanalahu thamar. Crops, crops and fruits would grow in the garden. And between the two gardens is a river that was running. We saw that today. We saw gardens. You saw flowing streams in the Wadi Al-Kabir, similar. It reminds you of, of that, what Allah is talking about. So the man, therefore, had two gardens, and they were beautiful. And Allah says, Lam minhu shay'a. Which means, Lam tanqus minhu shay'a. It means he was not deprived of anything in those two gardens. Fruit, the beauty, the splendor, the scenery, the warmth, everything Allah maintained for him in his two gardens. Right? He had everything in them. And Allah says, وَدَخَلَ جَنَّتَهُ وَهُوَ الظَّالِمُ لِنَفْسِهِ And he entered his garden. Now Allah says, do not say gardens in the plural. Allah says, it's garden singular. Which garden did he enter then? And as well as they say, because إِحْدَاهُمَا إِسْتِغْنَانَ الْأُخْرَى One of them is just like the other one. One is as beautiful as the other one is. If it makes no difference which one he entered. They're both the same. Right? He enters his garden. What does he say? And Allah says, he says to his friend in the previous ayah, So he says to his friend who doesn't have the two gardens, I am better than you because I have more power than you and I have a bigger following than you. Therefore, he saw his garden as a representation of power, as a status of symbol of status, symbol of prestige, symbol of honor. To be honest with you, the Mizr Zahra was exactly the same thing. It was a status of power. It was to show with Hasdai ibn Shaprud, that Jewish diplomat, bringing people in, see the splendor of Al-Andalus. And that's it. And like the brother was explaining, the masjid was hidden away in the corner. 
And you had these two gardens, the upper one, the lower one, and it was really a status of, of opulence, of wealth, of power, prestige. So Allah is telling us about the test of power, the test of wealth, if you have it. The man who had the two gardens, his friend didn't have it. And so he says to his friend, I have more than you. And because of that, I'm better than you. Now the next ayah is, he entered his garden. jannatahu. He entered his garden. And he said to his friend, And by the way, this is in Arabic, hiwar. Hiwar is conversation. He doesn't go to his friend with a prepared script and a speech. Like, I'm going to show off today. No. Because it's a conversation, it means this was his normal talk. This was what he was used to. He was used to a discourse dialogue like that because that's the way he was. And so he entered his garden and he says to his friend, I don't think whatever I have today is ever going to go. I don't think I would ever lose these gardens and nor do I think the last hour is going to come. And if it did come, whatever I have there will be better than what I have here. Delusion. <laughs> this is the delusion of power, the delusion of prestige. You think if you have it in this life, it guarantees that you would have it in the next life. But the key thing is, this is the qa'idah, that the affairs with Allah are not judged in material terms. That's the qa'idah. The, the affairs in this life are not judged by Allah in material terms. Does not mean whoever has the most in this life will have the most in the next life. Doesn't mean that, right? This was his failure. The man's problem was this. And then his friend spoke up. And he said this, well, again, he's conversing. No prepared script or speech. He's saying what's coming from his heart. And he says, you know, to his friend, uh, why, why don't you just say, why don't you just say, when you entered your garden, MashaAllah, la quwwata illa billah. In tariq naqal min kamal wa walada. Even if you see that I have less than you in mal and walada, in wealth and children, why don't you attribute what you have to Allah? Then you're saying it's not from me and my power, it's Allah gave it to me. And I've got to take care of whatever I have. I'm not saying it's because of me. Why didn't you say that? Because what could happen is that our affairs could be reversed. You think about that. Think about that. Reversal of affairs. It does strike you. It strikes you. We were walking past today. We saw a hospital, isn't it? I thought, what a small thing. It was a small, no, it was a bookshop, a library bookshop. And I thought, well, we once upon a time had hundreds of bookshops right here. Seville had 72 massages. We had all of that right here. But the reversal of affairs, reversal. The man says, why don't you say that? Because Allah could just change our affairs. And then you would have nothing and I would have something even better than what you have. And then, and what happened? It happened. And Allah removed all of his affairs, all of his garden, everything. Then Allah says, The man was woke up and he's wringing his hands, thinking, where has where it gone all that I had once upon a time? Right? And so we think about that because of, not just because affairs do change you can't maintain empire civilization forever you don't right there are civilizations existed before us that we don't even speak about like the egyptian civilization no one woke up this morning thinking about the egyptian civilization did you wake up this morning thinking about them no you didn't what about the roman empire did you wake up to anything roman empire no nothing right because they've gone and every, every <laughs> and everybody who was once there has also gone and all historians who recorded the events in that time have also all gone. Everybody has died. There's no mention of them anymore. But once upon a time, people would wake up in the morning thinking about them. Thinking about the Caesar and the Pharaoh, thinking about them. And the same with Al-Andalus, civilizations. And so this is a key reminder Allah informed us in the Quran from Surah Al-Kahf. The Surah about the cave, about the test of power, about the test of prestige and wealth, all of these a reminders for us. Number one, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, things in this life are in flux. They're constantly changing. Number two, the test of power, the test of wealth. Allah informs in the Quran about Qarun. Now Qarun is a very bad example, I mean negative in terms of people. And Allah says about him, Allah says, in the Qarun kan min qami Musa alayhim. He was from Musa alayhi people, Bani Israel, and he oppressed them, went over them. 
And Allah says again, وَآتَيْنَاهُ مِنَ الْكُنُوزِ Allah gave him from wealth, from treasures. Just like the previous ayah, وَجَعَلْنَا Allah gave, we gave him. Allah is the giver, right? And Allah says, وَآتَيْنَاهُ مِنَ الْكُنُوزِ مَا إِنَّ مَفَاتِحَهُ لَتُنُوءُ بِالْعُصْبَةِ أُولَى الْقُوَى Allah gave him such treasures, it would have taken a band of strong men to carry the keys of his wealth and treasures. Right? So what happened? The people, they saw this. And they said to him, لا تفرح. Don't exalt. Don't make whatever you have become a symbol of your power. Don't exalt. Allah does not love those who exalt. Exalt. And they said to him, وَابْتَغِي فيما آتاك الله دار الأخرة. Seek whatever Allah is giving you for the next life. If Allah gave you wealth, it's great. But invest some of it for the next life. Seek Allah with it. Help people. Seek Allah with the wealth. Allah, if Allah gave you intelligence, if Allah gave you power, all of these things are tests and trials for you. What would you do with them? Right? And then it made no difference. Because Qarun says, Paul, so whatever I have is because of me, because of my own knowledge. That's why I have. This is why the ulama they say, don't say three words, right? Don't say ana wali wa indi. Like don't say I I I. Like I the selfie the wall. I I I did it. No, because that's what Shaytan said to uh, to Allah. Ana khairun minhu. I am better than him. Adam, don't say uh, li, like Qarun. قال إنما أتيت على علم عندي ولي أو فرعون said وليس لي أليس لي ملك مصر isn't the kingdom of Egypt for me and don't say عندي with me whatever I have like Qarun said when he said right but attribute all goodness to Allah and so it made no difference to Qarun because in the next verse the first one is verbalizing I I have I'm telling what I have and the next one is showing so Allah says فخرج على قومه Allah he came out with his he came out with his zina, with all of his opulence. So his people could see what he has. And then the people, they said, Ya Layta Lana. If only we had, Mithla Ma'ud if only we could have what Qarun has. And so when you see symbols of power, there was to show the world, you should have what we have. How amazing it would be if you had what we had to create a culture of envy. Envy, right? And so what happened then? Allah says, فَخَسَفْنَا بِهِ وَبِدَارِ الْأَرْضِ Allah caused him to be swallowed in the earth and also all of his estates, all of his power was swallowed in the earth. And then those who previously wished to be like him, فَأَصْبَحَ الَّذِينَ يُقَلِّبُكَ Allah says those who wished to be like him before, they said, yeah, we were so lucky we were not like Qarun. But Allah saved us and Allah didn't save Qarun. All of these therefore are examples for us when we see power. Power is a responsibility. And for sure, the Muslims of Al-Andalus, in many ways, use that power to tremendous effect in helping others, in building and creating a civilization. But too much power has a negative effect. And that's the same thing Imam Qurtubi says about the ayah I began with. Strike for them the example of the life of this world like water. And Imam Qurtubi, the Imam from Qurtuba says, because water, if water is drunk to sufficiency, it's benefit for you. But if you have too much water, or even if you swim in the deep end too far off, it becomes destructive for you. And the world is like that. The world is like that. Because if you take on too much of it, it can destroy you. But if you can have what is sufficient, it can benefit for you. This is why Allah gave the, the best example is the Medina of Al Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Al Munawwara. That was the best example for the Muslims. And everything thereafter needs to model that city of the Prophet Sallam and that masjid of the Prophet. Sallam. That's the example Allah gave for us. So I thought it would be important for us to go over some of these things from the Quran and see how we could connect with them. The Imam the Imbalana on our in our Quran you recite from the Quran. Uh, the ayah from the Quran about division. And we know that one of the we've been hearing a Marshall Brothers be reminding us about how divisive things became. And this was one of the causes of our loss and our defeat. And in that verse the, the Imbalana recited, he said, Allah says in the Quran, Wa atasimu bi habli Allah says, Hold fast, all of you 
to the rope of Allah and do not be divided. All of you to hold fast. I'tisam, this is holding tightly. I'tisam, hold tightly all of you to Allah's rope and do not be divided. Then Allah says, and remember. So look at the, the, the sequence of commands. وَأَتَصِمُوا Hold fast. وَلَا تَفَرَّقُوا Don't divide. وَذْكُرُوا Remember, remind yourself. نِعْمَةَ اللَّهِ عَلَيْكُمْ Allah's favor upon you. إِذْ كُنْتُمْ أَعْدَاءً فَأَلَّفَ بَيْنَ قُلُوبِكُمْ When you were enemies and Allah brought your hearts together. Only bond we have, us and other people, Muslims, is a bond of La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah. And I think one of the things we can try in our own ways, because all of us, in all honesty, in very small, in very micro ways, are our emperors, isn't it? Your emperor of your house, brother Tariq, isn't it? King of your domains, brother. Don't you think, brother? Yes, sir. <laughs> the Prophet of Allah says, "Kullukum ra'in, kullukum ra'in wa mas'ulun rahi." The Prophet says, "All of you are shepherds and responsible for your flocks." وَالرَّجُلْ رَائِنْ فِي أَهْلِهِ And a man is responsible in his family وَمَسْؤُولْ أَنْ رَأْيَتِي And responsible for his flock وَمْرَأَةٌ And the woman رَأْيَةٌ فِي بَيْتِي زَوْجَةٌ Is responsible in her husband's home And responsible for, her, for that flock All of us are shepherds and shepherdesses We take care of people We look after environments, lands, gardens, homes, children People that we're uh, responsible for All of us have the same thing and in our own way, Allah will test us the same way. Right? Allah will test us in the same way. The key thing is for us to remember, therefore, is that everything in life is a test. Dunya can be a test. Lack of dunya can be a test. Wealth can be a test. Poverty is also a test. Everything Allah has given you, attribute it to Allah and never to yourself. This is why, this is why the man said to his friend, just say, just say, MashaAllah, Allah gave it, whatever Allah willed. La quwwata, there's no power except with Allah. Not because of myself, right? Because of Allah. And we did see this symbolically, I think, when we entered Al Khazar, even uh, Al Hamra, when the rulers would say, right? La ghaliba illallah. La ghaliba illallah. There's no victor except Allah. In some cases, it was a bit too late to say that. La ghaliba illallah. But it was, it was a reflection of faith and iman that they would say something like that. But all of us have, should have the attitude in our lives, you know. And so may Allah bless all of you. Jazakumullah khairan. I thought it was important to say a few things, you know. About what we're seeing.